Hello all. I thought I would give a, a brief demo on how you can uh, make a quick monogram with many variations in Illustrator. Now a monogram is um, usually a collection of initial letters, usually uh, of a name, uh, that is combined into a single mark. And uh, I'm sure that you all you know, have the basic tools. Uh, you probably picked these up in GRA 220 or back in the 200 level courses that dealt with uh, Illustrator. So I'm going to use Illustrator. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that you have some familiarity with the uh, tool palette. Um, I've used the uh, polygon tool to create uh, this, uh, what is that, a hexagon? Uh, just be aware that you, know, you don't have to, I'm, I'm gonna create a seal. Uh, you don't have to use a circle or a square. You can use you know, uh, other shapes uh, depending on what uh, will fit your monogram. And again, this is you know, really more an exercise in typography than it is a how do I design a logo. This is just meant to get you some ideas. Those of you who are going to have a monogram uh, or initials in your logo, it might give you some ideas. So uh, I've drawn some background shapes. I've set some type here. I know that uh, this is for TJ uh, Shikla, who was a former student. And uh, I know his initials are TJ, so <clears throat> um, I've seen recently that he uses a lowercase j. So what I'm doing is I'm going to, uh, I've set uh, the T in a variety of uh, letter forms. I have a big font library, um, and <clears throat> these are fonts that I have uh, paid for in the past. Some of them are quite old, and I wouldn't recommend using them. But um, even the default typefaces that are on your system, um, you can use, or if you've purchased in the last you know, terms, uh, typefaces that you wanted to use. Be careful of typefaces that you find for free off of the uh, internet. I'm sure we, you've had this discussion before. Generally, if they're free, um, you get what you pay for, and they're not terribly well designed, or their screen, equi screen equivalents uh, aren't very good, or there's something wrong with the letter fit. Uh, so forth. So be careful about uh, free typefaces on the internet. Anyway, here's my library of typefaces. I'm going to uh, set uh, the T uh, in a variety of thick um, or bold typefaces that I have in my um, library. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert e each of these lines of type to outline format. It's up here under Create Outlines. You'll see how um, you can see the vectors now. Do the same thing for the italic. Create Outlines, there we go. So we've got those. Now while I'm down here, I'm, I'm just, for purposes of demonstration, I'm gonna make this pretty quick. I'm gonna change the fill uh, at, on this to white. So we can see them. <coughs> Uh, if we go to outline format, but if you preview them, you shouldn't be able to see them. Now we can uh, drag them around individually. I'm going to take this good looking slab syrup. Whoops. I'm going to use the direct select tool uh, to select it. Oops, maybe I can use the. There we go. And uh, then remember, this is black. So you know maybe I want to change the fill to something to white. And uh, let's see what it looks like. Okay, so we've got that. Uh, maybe I'll take one of these uh, J's. This, this is um, a wood font from the 19th century. You know, we associate it with the uh, Wild West. I don't know if TJ would appreciate that, but uh, at any rate, uh, I just you know get a variety. Think about contrast, something thick against something italic. Remember I have these uh, I have this graceful um, script J, which might look good. Whoops, make sure you select everything. You don't want to distort them yet.
Now, uh, you notice that if I select one of these lines of type, um, I'm moving everything. So you have to ungroup them. That way I can move them around individually. I can move this J. And I'm going to scale it up using the Scale tool. Position this perhaps, and I'm going to set this for um, <clears throat> a white fill also. Let's preview it. Oops. We send this to the background. There we go. Now, um, you know, I don't. How much you obscure the letter forms? It's one of those aha moments. Maybe you just want to have the part of the T showing or part of a single letter form, you can inch, move things around uh, appropriately and um, <clears throat> creates, you know, interesting mark that keeps people maybe guessing. Um, and, but, you know, that isn't so distant from his initials that it doesn't, after a while, suggest TJ. All right, so that's, that's a suggestion. Now, <clears throat> um, obviously, you don't want to be moving all these things around. You want to create a single mark. So there's a couple ways you can do that. First of all, let me ungroup these. So now, now I'm just dealing with this. I'm going to select these. I'm going to go up under Object, Compound Path, Make. All right, so that's, uh, let's look at it under Outline. You might have to go back in and clean it up a little bit. So you want to create a, a single mark. Um, I've opened up the Pathfinder dialog box. Take a look at through these options. You can just scroll through them. Uh, that creates a uh, single path of the a perimeter. Don't want that. Um, this, let's see what this does. There, that's what we want. See how it's clipped off the top of this oval? Uh, and what mode was that? That is minus the front. So I bought all these, the T and the J to the front. I selected them with the background. And then I selected uh, this minus front option. Let's just see what the other ones look, do. This is intersect. Okay, so that did not uh, produce anything. We got an error message there. And then let's take a look at uh, exclude. And let's see what that previews. It's probably going to be um, just a set of paths. So that's, that's also not what we wanted. So it looks like our best, op best option is minus front. And this way you can put this over, you can, you know, you can select the fill uh, and you don't have to deal with uh, filling the J and the T separately. You can select any, any pretty much any fill. Uh, you could put a photograph behind it. So I hope this gives you some ideas for how to develop a monogram. Uh, be aware of the negative space, you know, that the, uh, what you see as a positive black here needs to be seen from a distance. Um, it has to be used very small, say on a business card, and it could appear quite large, perhaps even on a billboard. So keep that range of sizes um, in mind. All right, so um, here's a quick suggestion. I'm going to post an uh, introduction, and I think I'm going to also make this part of the uh, tonight's uh, week two um, introduction.